Thank you. Thank you. It's very good to see so many people here. And uh, okay, uh, to start my presentation, firstly, I would like to discuss some connection between some key technology trends and the next products. I believe these cloud mobile virtualizations are all important technology trends in the past years. It's no doubt. I believe it will with me. And for cloud, nowadays, everyone, almost everyone, I should not say everyone, almost everyone is using public cloud. And it's so convenient, it's so easy to use. Because of some privacy and ownership and performance issue, people start to look for private cloud solution. And private cloud is happen to be one of the important features can be provided by NAS products. The second key technology trend, mobile. So, uh, again, almost everyone has a mobile device, either smartphone or tablet, anything. Because people are carrying mobile device all the time. So I think it's inevitable. They want to access their data anytime, anywhere. And NAS is a good solution to work 24-7 and provide data access all the time. For business market segment, virtualizations, yeah, it's uh, very, very popular in business. And to be a very good storage solution for virtual, virtualized system, I think it's important to be very good performance and easy to be scaled out, the storage, and also be able to be managed, centralized. So this is also something can be done by NAS products. That's why in Synology we believe NAS is a very great product to fulfill the need generated by these important IT technology trends. And that's why we spend many years developing a lot of features to fulfill the need from, from this. We believe this kind of solution can make people interested in our products. It turns out we are right. Here is a Google Trend Analysis chart. In the past six years, you can see people's interest, in Dutch users' interest in Synology. Neighbors start growing. Actually, right now, at this moment, you can see it's a hit a record high level. So we are very happy that, okay, we, we, we have the, the right vision and people indeed interest in this kind of solutions. But we hope that they are not just interested in it, they also like it after using this kind of solution. And yeah, we are lucky. This is something I, I share last time when I'm in Netherlands, and I really like it, so I would like to share it again. So this is a reader's vote. So it's not some review, it's a reader's vote from PC Magazine. And you can see that Synology is ranked number one among the server and NAS solution providers. Cisco, Dell, HP, IBM, they are following us. And in these lines, in 2013, we also received two annual awards, the best NAS products from two magazines. So we are very happy that we not only interest people with the NAS solution, we also make them satisfied after using our products. But we are not just satisfied with that. We believe there are still so many things to do, so many things to add into a NAS solution. In 2014, we are going to redefine NAS again by our brand new DSM 5.0. We will soon go through the details, and I hope you will like it. And if you have any feedback, any comments, please share it with me after the presentation. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, my name is uh, Albert Alport, working at Synology, mainly on the Benelux market. So I'd like to go through three main sections today with you. Uh, the first one's going to be talking about uh, our brand new user interface. Uh, you, you'll see how better it is. The design is actually very clever, very interesting. Now we'll go over across the cloud, some new function that we added. Just like Darren said, uh, there is some interesting features and also some public cloud functions that have been added. And we'll conclude with uh, some uh, the mobile section, mobile features. We all know it's part of your life now, every day, everyone is using it. So we decided uh, to make some effort on that side. 
new vision cross border the brand new DSM. This is how it looks like now. You can definitely see the changes. Looks a lot better. First, we have brand new icons. Brand new icons are a lot better. 3D design has been given up for more plain content. Why that? We simply think it looks better. We made them bigger. It's also easier for, for you to identify them. <coughs> on the top of it, you'll see on the top right of the screen where is uh, the toolbar. What happened on the toolbar is, well, now we have some new function added. Uh, we decided it was important to go through this. We also have on the bottom, you see uh, that little section, report bugs. Very interesting. I'll explain you, I'll make you a quick demo later to show you how you can be easier in contact with our technical support. We also have on the top left our main menu. Now, about our package center. What's so new about our package center? Well, first, you'll see the first time you will launch it, you'll have a number on the corner of the icon. What is that number? Well, it's simply the number of updates available to you. You won't need to go and click on it, open the package center and say, oh, how many updates I have to do. It will simply tell you. It will save you a bit of time. Not only you can do that, but you can also set up an automatic update, which is great. Instead of opening it, clicking on each uh, application and launching the update, no. You simply click on it, go and set up the automatic updates. Very convenient. Now, this is how we look at our main menu. Our main menu is divided into two sections. The top section is actually the most uh, frequently used application you have. In the second section, you'll see all the older applications. It's clear, it's very roomy, lots of space. Not only that, but you see here, for you tablet users, you'll be very happy about it. You simply launch the main menu, and you can navigate through it. What is great about it is both are actually not pictures, but the, the actual content that are on display. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you. We have added also some widgets. The DSM 4.3 users probably wonder, what happened to all my widgets that I wanted to have a look at? Well, they're right here. You click on it from the top of the toolbar, and they're all there, all of them. Now you say, but I like it the way it was before. Well, what you do is you click on one, you can drag it either on the right or on the left, and drop it. Let's say this one. Okay. All right. Here it is. Just like the way you want. You can select the exact widget you're looking for, and it will display. You can reduce the size of it. You can make them disappear with a shortcut on the top. See? And they are back. So that's one thing uh, I wanted to show you today. I told you about uh, the report bugs previously. Just on the bottom, you simply have access to the form to contact our support center now. Now you don't even need to leave your DSM, go on our website to fill out the form, look for the section. It's right there. You just simply fill it out and you simply send it. Easy, no? We have here our storage manager. Look at it. Gives you all the information you're looking for. Let's go on volume here. First volume, it's normal, everything's okay. The second one, now let's go on drive again. Very convenient, very easy, you have a good display. Also, I wanted to show you on our control panel. What's new about it is that you have different sections now. Both sections will make it easier to navigate and look for the applications you're actually looking for. And now, our main menu. Here it is. So, the top parts of the frequently used applications, and the rest of them. 
and you simply click on one of them to launch the application of your choice. One last feature here, we have our toolbar section. What's great about it is actually instance. Let's say I'm going to take, I'm looking for video. Instantly, you have all the information here. So it's very quick and very, very convenient. Now, let's go back to our presentation. Is there any one of you who have ever used uh, Quick Connect previously? Yeah? Okay, great. I'm glad to see that. Well, uh, good news for you because it's actually even better and I hope you'll be even more to use it now. Uh, the first thing is, I'd just like to make a quick reminder for the one who don't know about it. What's Quick Connect? Well, Quick Connect will uh, let you have access remotely to your NAS. Quick example, you're at your office, you're leaving the office, you're going home, and you say, ah, I need to work to, on some files today, but they're on my NAS. Well, the Quick Connect will generate a link and it will let you access remotely to your NAS. But it was quite complicated previously because you needed, sorry, you needed to do some port opening, some port forwarding, and it's not for everyone, not a beginner necessarily uh, know how to do it. You won't need to do that anymore. It's very simple. The second great thing about it is Quick Connect well, was mainly for and was only for Cloud Station. No more. You can actually use it for our main applications now. Now, you see how it looks like. Previously, you had to remember some URL number, not necessarily easy. You say, oh, you're switching number, you can't find it anymore. It's, it's kind of complicated. Well, now, the format is very simple, and you can even customize it. See, you can add, for example, your name, your last name, some special numbers, whatever you want. Even, it's now easier to remember this. What happens if you forget your quick connect? Well, now, I don't know for the one of you who's seen it on our website, on the support section, uh, you have My DS Center. What's My DS Center? Well, it's actually a space where you can retrieve all your information and all your quick connect uh, ID information. Just like a, an email account, like you sign in, you put your email, your password, and you will have all the information and all your NAS connected to it. Now, about some file sharing. Very important. You don't necessarily want everyone to have access to all your information on your NAS. You might have some sensitive information. You, you, might, you might want to be careful about it. So we had three different functions. You could write your document, you can save it, or you can delete it previously. Well, with the different users you have, you have now three extra uh, permissions you can create. You have the write only, the no traverse, and the no deletion. The write only, well, the user of your choice can only write on the, on the document, make some changing, and save them. The no deletion, well, he's not allowed to delete the document or the folder of your choice. I want to show you how all that works. Now, I'm going on my file station and select a folder. Let's take an example for teachers. You ask, you're a teacher, you give some homework, and you ask your student to submit uh, some homework. Well, you create your shared folder homework. Let's say it's for the class A. You look at it, oh, okay, John, he already, uh, he's done. He submitted his, uh, his homework. It's right here. Now, how are we going to set up all that permission? We do a right click, and you will go on properties. From properties, you go on permission, and you create it. I'm going to select a user. Well, I'm going to select one of the other students, David. What do I want David to do? Well, here we're going to select what David is going to to be able to do or not do. We are going to select deny, for example, because we don't want David to be able to read through John's homework and also to write on it. We'll go on OK. Again, it's saving, and that's it. It's very easy, very simple, very convenient. Very clever feature.
Now about social media. Well, we all know social media, it's, it's normal a trend. It's very, it's every day, it's part of our life. We log on them uh, several times a day. We use them for uh, many, many things. Well, we decided to add some new features on it and create some extra possibilities for the users. How does that work? Let's say you are at some uh, dinner and with some friends you say, oh, I've seen some uh, great pictures, but I don't have my pictures with, with me at the moment. Well, simply, and you have several friends, well, you want to share with everyone. You're going to submit your picture and send them to your friend on Facebook or Google Plus here. Well, the good thing about it is you can directly do it on your DSL. You don't need to go upload, download the, the file, the picture, whatever it is, and go and submit it. Now you do it from your DSM, and you can directly send it to the social media of your choice. I'll show you that. Here, we got to select a file. We're going to go to photos here in London, and a picture of the time. <coughs> You select the file, you do a right click, and you will go on share file links. Several ways before I talk about the solution to the cloud client. It wasn't possible before. <coughs> Remember, your cloud client can be your computer, it can be your cell phone, your tablet, whatever you want, but you couldn't make your own app be a cloud client. Why that is great is you can do now the two-way synchronization between several NAS, which is actually very convenient. Not only you can do that. You see here, <coughs> you can actually have multiple cloud stations and be linked to several uh, this station. Sorry, <coughs> that's very easy. That's very convenient. Also about the safety and some sharing features. Well, about safety, you can see you can have the data pushing with the read-only function, making, making it more safe for your data. And as well about the, sh the file sharing. Well, you can simply generate a link, send it, and it will make it easier for you to share all your information. Now, I told you about some uh, public cloud function. Well, now you can do some synchronization with either Bailu, Google Drive, or Dropbox. Why would you like to do that? Well, some people sometimes they say, oh, I'd like to have a, an extra step where I could uh, back up or save all my NAS data. Uh, now, you can do it on the public cloud, and you can do it the other way around, meaning if you have some precious data on your public cloud, you can actually back it up on your NAS, which is very convenient. I'll show you how that works. You will simply go on the cloud synchronization. Now, you have the choice. If you Google Drive, Dropbox, Baidu, I select Google Drive. I'm going to accept. Now, what you want to do is select your file. You select it. And apply it. Congratulations. Setup is done and now it's syncing. That's it. A simple as that. Now you will directly appear on your Google Drive. Great feature. Now let's have some more fun and talking about some uh, multimedia, leaving uh, a little bit the, the transaction. I'm sure most of you uh, know about PhotoStation. Personally, it's one of my uh, favorite applications. Uh, what has been done here is a better way to organize your picture and your albums. How is that? Well, there's some album tree organization now. The good thing about it is you create your album, you can have subdivided categories and add simply a better organization, which we didn't have before. So that's a great thing. The great thing about it as well is you can also better copy album or picture from an album to another album, making it a lot easier. And the last thing on PhotoStation is about the thumbnails. Well, sometimes we have some, you can see people saying, oh, I have lots of duplicates uh, of the thumbnails. How can I solve that? 
Now it's very simple. You can reselect one single format of the mails. This way you will avoid any issue of uh, duplication. Well, again, photo station. What you can do, you see people sometimes they tend to take videos with the camera. So you go on holidays, you create your album, you have all your pictures, and you have some small video which you want them to be part of your album. <coughs> Let's say you're, uh, you're with some friends and say, oh, I've seen this thing, it's actually great, it's really cool, I'd like to, to show it to you, and actually all the friends want to see it. And you decide, okay, I'll just put it on YouTube and you guys now can see it. Well, now you can do that directly from YouTube, which is quite amazing. Now, let's go and have a look at PhotoStation. Well, here, PhotoStation, still with a great display here. I really myself love the, the map display where you can see all the picture happening and everything. It's actually, uh, I really love it. Now, about the album tree I just told you about. I'll go on a holiday. Well, there's several places I've been, so I've been created an album tree with the different places I've been. And you make it very easy to navigate through that. Now, let's say you want to copy a picture from an album to another album. I have created uh, an album uh, by that name, actually, Monument. I will simply select it, drag it, and drag it. Go on it, it's in there. Right here. Remove the album of an email now. So it's very easy and it's actually a very great feature. Now I just told you about some uh, YouTube functions. What about that video I want to share with my friends? Well, I'm going to go and sell in that video. Here is a video I really like. You'll see from the moment I'm going to select the video and click on it on the top. The toolbar is going to change. Right now, I have the function share. What I do is I upload it to YouTube. I just name it. I love that video. Say, have fun. Now, I connect it with my YouTube accounts. All right, now it's done, and I will simply upload the file. The event share tell you the progression, and that's it. No more. It's going to show on your YouTube account directly. Great feature. Very great feature. But video station, another great application that I really like. Um, well, the good thing about the video station is you create your own library and you can internally customize it. <coughs> you can put the name of the actors, some movie description, uh, some description of the script. You can do all kind of things. You can also select the posture. You know, some movies like the Thor movie here uh, actually uh, create different postures. Myself, I will uh, pick the one with Natalie Portman. I don't know about you, but uh, uh, that's, that's what I would like to do. And it's possible, and it's very easy. You simply need to go select the URL link of the poster of your choice and add it. The second great thing about it is uh, Apple users. Uh, I'm sure there is a lot of you uh, tonight, and uh, you'll be happy because uh, the 5.1 uh, format sound is now supported with the Apple TV. I mean, you're watching a great movie, you want to have a great sound. It's not possible with the Apple TV, making it a lot more interesting. Now, on video station, what you want to do is you select your movie. You're going on action and edit the video information. 
well, you see you have the type of the movie, the cast, the writer, director, this is great. Here is a section faster. You select enter URL, you simply need to copy your URL, and it will change the poster of your choice. That's as simple as that. <coughs> now, I'm pretty sure uh, some of you have seen uh, various uh, big players now uh, there uh, for uh, the video. You see uh, Samsung coming out with uh, their smart TV. Great concept. And uh, we actually believe at Psychology that they are leading that segment. Smart TV, you see you have different applications. They are already on the TV. You can directly launch them from your TV. Great. You see you have Facebook, YouTube, some Skype included. Well, we've decided to be part of it as well. I will show you that. Now about Chromecast. For the one of you who don't know about Chromecast, it's a, it's a dongle that you can plug directly on your TV with uh, it's an uh, HDMI input. From there, you can directly stream your content from DS Video or DS Audio to Chromecast that will display it on your TV. How that works? See here on the screen, uh, you have DS Video and you have DS Audio. You see on the little corner there is uh, on red circle it tells you, well, actually, your smartphone, your tablet is actually connected to Chromecast. From there, you simply go navigate through the library and you select the movie of your choice. And once you selected it, you play it and it will turn it directly on your TV. As simple as that. Again, same thing for uh, the DS audio. You're with some friend and your friend complains about the music and you say, okay, have a look at it and here is uh, my library and your friend will go through your tablet select and can even do his own playlist, <laughs> and you can play it, and it will directly uh, turn it from Chromecast to the TV. Great possibility. Now, told you about uh, Samsung. Well, what they've done uh, for their application, they created what they call Smart App, where you can go and select the different applications of your choice. Well, we have now DS Video, designed especially for Samsung Smart TVs, making it great. Think about it, you go from uh, your NAS or uh, your tablet and with your smartphone you select the video of your choice and you directly uh, play it on your, uh, on your Smart TV. This is great, you don't even need, you just simply go on the application, select it and play it. Very simple. <coughs> Now, we're going to leave a little bit the multimedia section and we'll go on some more business and mobile applications. First, about DS file. About DS file, there's some new things for you. Uh, we have a better thumbnail organization. What's uh, better about it? Well, you see there's some icons, they are bigger and they are better displayed. It's easier for you to navigate through them and actually select the folder of your choice. Not only that, but you have also the key function that will appear on the top of the toolbar. You simply go on it, and you can select it. Now, the four main uh, new things as well on this file. The first one, the link sharing. You can generate a link, and you can add it a password as well as a next party date. Let's say you're on business trip, you're on the go, you need to search to share some file with your coworkers. You go on your DS file and you play it. Well, you actually create the link, password, and it needs expiry date. You don't have to do it all the time, and it's actually bringing you uh, an extra cautious and bringing more safety. You have also an advanced search system uh, created with filters. The compress and extract file, you can actually compress file into an archive and then extract that archive on the DS which wasn't the case previously, and you can also set up some favorite. I'm sure there is lots of documents you're using every day that are going and looking for them. You just put them on your favorite, and it's very simple, they will show you. <coughs> now, about DS Photoglass. Another good news for uh, the Apple TV users, because it will work directly with uh, your DS Photo, which is actually a great news. You can also navigate through it uh, easily. 
Why that? Because we've been creating, you can create now some tag, some album, and as well some categories, which wasn't the case previously. Now, I don't know if you use previously as an instant uh, upload feature. Uh, that feature is amazing, actually. Let's say you're on the uh, tablets and uh, you take a picture. That picture, you can actually instantly upload it. Actually, it will do it by itself. You it will upload it to uh, your DS photos. Well, now that feature is available for the iOS users, which wasn't the case previously. About DS Cloud. DS Cloud, now there's a monitoring bar progress for your synchronization. It's very simple. This bar will just tell you how the synchronization, sorry, the synchronization process is going through. And then it give you an idea. Instead of waiting and say, oh, how long it's going to take, it will simply give you a quick idea. Also, you cannot synchronize your folder from your TS Cloud, not only one NAS, but several NAS, which is actually great. I'm sure lots of people have <coughs> uh, several NAS, one at home, one at your office. And it's available for Android and iOS users. How about DS Audio? Some interesting uh, transcoding feature. Uh, we've been working on transcoding lately, uh, especially for the one we look for the DS214 play. But transcoding is still there. The idea here for the DS Audio is actually to save you some bandwidth. Sometimes you can waste some of it because there's some settings to do. Now the setting can be done automatically. There's actually three levels of setting you can choose. High, medium, or low. Both settings will automatically adjust depending on your internet connection. If you're on 3G, if you're on LAN, or on Wi-Fi, it will simply make the uh, update by itself. This way you're sure you're saving a lot of bandwidth. 